Let's bring in General Jack Keane. And General, I think instead of asking you a specific question, I think what I would like to do right now is um, after the night uh, to process all that we saw yesterday, and I know that you were on the air yesterday giving your thoughts, how do you feel this morning after watching that C-17 try to take off from the Kabul airport? Well, it's heartbreaking to watch something like that, and you can't uh, help but make the comparison to the helicopters flying out of Saigon and C-17s attempting to fly out of the Kabul uh, airport. Uh, it's a stark reminder of what defeat really looks like and the suffering that people uh, are going to experience as a result of that defeat. Listen, it took four presidents to get where we are in Afghanistan, and there's good things done by each and there's some serious policy mistakes done, done by each. But when it really gets down to it, this Taliban victory that we're seeing right before our eyes is something President Biden truly owns. I mean, his, his self-righteous stubbornness, when advised by his own national security team, both civilians and military, that there is a likelihood, not just a probability, but a likelihood that the Taliban will take over if we pull out our robust intelligence and our air support. And by the way, in terms of the Vietnam comparison, our military leaders at the time said the same thing. If we pull away the air support from the South Vietnamese Army, it's likely that the North Vietnamese will collapse them. And that was ignored. And these are people, particularly the military leaders, have years of experience here and know the fragility of the Afghan military. And they know that they have relied for the last seven years, since 2014, when we pulled our combat forces out, the Afghan security forces have been fighting the Taliban with robust intelligence and air power. And every offensive that's taken place in those seven years has been pushed back. And this offensive would have been pushed back as well. Look at the situation in Afghanistan, so our viewers understand, has never been a perfect situation. It is imperfect, to be sure. Mm -hmm. But we have able to establish something of a status quo stalemate, where the Taliban could not take over the, the government and remove it, and the government, even with U.S. assistance, could not defeat the Taliban, largely because they have a safe haven in Pakistan. But that imperfect situation and that status quo that was achieved was in the interest of the United States national security because it provided us the means to ensure that Al Qaeda and other international terrorists did not resurrect themselves inside mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Exactly. And therefore, we were protecting the American people. Yep. And that is what we have abandoned here. Uh, General, we're watching some video. I think this was filed late last night at sundown there. And I was telling Dana, like, you, you can feel the fear that these people have uh, with the desperation to try and find some sort of safety and security. That last thought there about uh, foreign forces going back to Afghanistan. If you were a member of the ISIS caliphate who survived western Iraq or eastern Syria before President Trump went in and wiped them out, and you were able to go back to your village and spend the last five years there, perhaps, you know, going back to 2016, 2017. This is like Christmas morning because now you know a new refuge has been created for you. Am I right or am I wrong? No, I, absolutely right. Listen, the consequences of this will unfold over the next months and, and, and years, and they're going to be significant, and none of them are good for the United States, certainly when it comes to the world jihadist movement itself. I mean, this is their major victory. Certainly 9-11 was to a certain degree, but now a radical Islamists are in charge of Afghanistan and the United States surrendered to them. That is the way that will be sold around the whole world jihadist movement. So their currency is going up. Their recruiting is going up. Many of them are going to want to come to Afghanistan because the Taliban stature is going to be preeminent among world jihadists, and they'll want to be a, a part of it. And that is going to be dangerous, certainly, for the United States and for our allies if that epicenter begins to reform again. And think of, think of what's the backlash is already taking place from our allies. I mean, they are saying, I thought America was back. This doesn't look like America's back. That's from a a British defense official. The Germans are criticizing us. Remember this, that the European countries who are participating in the conflict in Afghanistan, and they, they, they had a anteed up about seven or 8,000. We were going to keep about 2,500 there. They wanted to stay. 
These are the feckless Europeans who we criticize so much. But they wanted to stay in Afghanistan. Why? Because of their own national security interests. They did not want to see what we're talking about now, an epicenter formed in Afghanistan for jihadism. That would be a threat to them, and certainly it's a threat to the United States. General and our other allies around the world, certainly in Asia, have got to be questioning. The, the, the Biden team was just out there showing up the alliances, American credibility. We're back. We're going to be there for you. Are they looking at that and saying, is that a hollow promise? Is the United States really have the credibility and resolve to, to come for us and protect us? Those questions are out there. General, you mentioned our allies, but what about our adversaries? So I'm thinking back to September 10th, 2001. And at the time, the Taliban did not have recognition from China, Iran, Russia, possibly the Gulf states moving forward. But now they do. And one of the things that the Biden administration assured everyone was that if the Taliban were to do what they are obviously doing right in front of our eyes, that they would be isolated in the world. But are they actually now isolated? Well, they're likely not going to be isolated because certainly China and likely Iran will recognize and we'll see what, what Russia does. And the Taliban certainly wants to enter into uh, not, not only recognition agreements with other countries in the world to, get, to gain some legitimacy, but they certainly want to enter into trade to be able to sustain their country and, and move their economy forward, which is going to have real problems for them. But listen, have we played into the narrative of China and Russia, who have already out there on the world stage saying the United States is in decline, they no longer are the world's global leader, and what we're looking at today on our television screens, does that look like the world's global leader in the chaos that we have unleashed here, not just in the Afghan people themselves, which is the suffering is going to be significant, but writ large in the world? And that narrative is going to be out there, and they'll use that propaganda, and they'll use it with our allies in the region to intimidate and coerce and say to them, look, the United States isn't going to be here for you. What, what do you think about the people in Ukraine and what they're thinking, the people in Taiwan, and, and, and what, what's on their mind? And I, will the Iranians increase the pressure in Iraq to drive us out of Iraq? They're, mm -hmm. they're, we're no longer on their eastern border. They don't want us on their western border. We all know that. Is, are they going to increase the pressure there with their proxies? You bet you're going to do that mm -hmm. and, today, and try today to get is, the United States out of Iraq as General, well. Let, let's go through a couple of things. Today's August 16th, as you well know, on the calendar. I just I want to go back over 60 days. Um, heck, maybe it's 45 days. Two clips here, guys. Uh, call for one. Uh, this is the president, July 8th. Uh, what I would argue is a rather infamous clip now, as we see these images asked about the withdrawal. Watch. Do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam? The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese Army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comparable. That was June, uh, July 8th. Go one month prior. June 7th, Anthony Blinken before a House committee. We're not withdrawing. We're staying. Uh, the embassy is staying. I don't think it's going to be something that happens from a Friday to a Monday. Uh, so I wouldn't um, necessarily equate the departure of our forces uh, in July, August, or by early September with some kind of immediate uh, deterioration. It's just, it's just remarkable. <laughs> Uh, he said from a Friday to a Monday. General, we left work on Friday. And, and the string of events that occurred throughout the day on Saturday and Sunday were mind-blowing to us. I, it, it would defy the ability to imagine how Afghanistan could unravel so quickly after 20 years. Now, the president put out a statement over the weekend. It's two pages in length. Um, he, he said a lot in there. Part of it was blaming his predecessor. Uh, but this is what he said. I want to know from you, from a military standpoint, if this is an accurate statement. He said, I was left with no choice. There's a bare minimum of 2,500 forces left behind. Quote, I faced a decision, follow through on the deal with a brief extension to get our forces and our allies' forces out safely, or ramp up our presence and send more American troops to fight once again in another country's civil conflict. We did not lose a person to the Taliban in 18 months. Is that accurate based on the two, dis well, the two choices that he thought he had as stated in there? 
You know, I go back to this uh, stubborn self-righteousness that he's the foreign policy expert and he dismisses his own people who are advising him. I mean, we know for a fact that experienced military leaders told the out our, on our intelligence case enabling the Afghan security forces to achieve this then it's not only probable but it's likely that the Taliban could take over now having had that piece of knowledge if he still chose and say I'm going to un I'm going to withdraw unilaterally regardless then he should have put in the conditions mm -hmm. to ensure that the Taliban does not take over which was one of the conditions that the Trump administration had announced a one may withdrawal that never would have taken place in, in my mind uh, because they would never have been able to achieve be able to do that by one may mm -hmm. and what what I mean by that is is that withdrawal in a winter not during the height of the fighting season for sure but more importantly you have to have a basing strategy in the region which we were not able to achieve in so that you can maintain the air support that the tal uh, that the Afghan security forces so desperately needed, coming from the Middle East. Yeah. Our flight to be able to. General, we so, are losing your audio just a little bit. Sorry about that, General. Thank you for all of these um, comments. We'll be in touch with you throughout the day as uh, General Jack Keane follows the story as closely as well, possible. What I did